This is an interesting one. It comes from Modest Moz33 on a five star Apple podcast review. Appreciate you, Modest Moz33. He says, Mr. Layman, can you provide memories of the 2003 shellacking of Texas AM? And more importantly, weigh in on my long held theory that the weirdness of that day, an AMP team seeking revenge for the 2002 upset destroying souls for a half, then forced to play a glorified scrimmage in the second half to avoid scoring 100 plus negatively affected the team's mindset for the rest of that season. Um, I, I will shoot down your theory about that game negatively affecting the rest of the season. I don't think it did. Honestly, and it's kind of hard to explain this when you're when you're in it you don't really think about it and i'm probably the worst i'm a damn robot all i do is like try and sprint out onto the field do exactly what i'm supposed to on every single snap and then sprint off of the field like i don't i don't get caught up in anything else going on out there and that's why i don't remember a whole lot about football games is I don't know it's um very robotic I guess but the interesting thing that, about that game is and you know more of it was offensively than it was defensively kind of the conversation going on because you're not going to convince defensive players to like let someone catch a deep ball on them or let someone get a first down it's just you can't really you can't really play it that way so the conversation is like coach stoops is in the huddle with the offense telling them not to score telling them to just like don't get any yardage just go down so we can like turn it over on downs to them and because i remember like it was it was in the third quarter i think the the starting defense came out and played maybe the first or the the maybe the first two series of defense in the third quarter and in one of them i think Derek straight either had a i think he had a pick interception maybe a pick six or something but it's like when you get a guy that's got the defensive guy that's got the ball in his hands he's gonna go score with it it doesn't matter what you've told him like he's you've seen guys at the end of games whenever it's over trying to go score so um i don't remember a whole lot but the revenge tour is true like we had we had lost the year before we lost to Oklahoma State and we lost to Texas A&M and should not have lost to either one of those teams were far superior to both of them and we were pissed off and I guess whenever you look at it we beat those two teams by a combined what would it be like 129 to 9 129 to 9 yeah and it was uh, – I, I, I don't think that had anything to do with the mindset of the football team. I – the only thing I can say about the mindset of that football team is you kind of have to understand the era, not to go on too long, but everyone on that team was basically told how god-awful they were for four straight years. Like everything was bad. Nothing was good enough. It was just grind, grind, grind. And then like at the end of the season, before we played the big 12 championship, ESPN comes in and they do like some, some like special on like, is this the best team in college football history? And when they did that special, I just remember seeing like the coaches on there, like interviews with the coaches talking about like how good all these players were and like all the, it's like, wait, what, what are they saying? Is that true? Are we actually good? Is that like, and I, that's the only thing I can point to that like crept in a little bit, like, okay, we made it. We made it. We're there. We've arrived. And I think that is what maybe took the edge off of that team some. As that, embarrassing as that is to admit. Yeah, that that can't be easy for like you are a robot, you still are. 
<laughs> right. That can't be easy for you to acknowledge, but you know, hindsight is is what it is. And like, I didn't think about it at the time. Like right. I didn't never think about it until like after the fact, like, Oh, uh, interesting coincidence. Also Darren Sproles is really damn good at football. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I know you don't like talking about losing the national championship game. I wouldn't like talking about it either, but if Jason white was healthy, you probably win the national championship. Yep. Yep. How not to pry too much. How often do you think about that? Well, unfortunately, since I do a radio show and talk about Oklahoma football, the topic and Tyler McComas, the, uh, my co-host likes to, I talk about the losses I had in college way more than I talk about anything else. It gets brought up nearly on a daily basis. I, I think people would be alarmed like they would be like, Gabe, are you okay? If they could, if they could hear my thoughts and hear how often I think about losing to Texas my senior year, but I will be walking around my house. Like <laughs> this is a, this is terrible, but I was playing uh, my son. My son's got a pretty good little arm on him, right? 11 month old kid can, can kind of rip it. I'm not going to lie. And he threw one just real accurate. And I was like, oh, look at the accuracy. And in my head, I was like, just like Case McCoy that day. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, why do I still think about that? Like, it's so stupid, but that is, that's, you're right, dude. You think about the losses. Like, I, I hardly ever think about the Sugar Bowl. You, and I don't, that was a highlight of my college career, probably. And I think about, Losing to Texas, losing to Notre Dame at home in 2012, uh, losing to K State that year, which I still think like there's no reason we should have lost that game. Like, I, I think about it all the time. I never think about the wins ever. I know. I mean, that's bad. We should we should think about the good times more, man. Yeah, I. But it's weird that I don't know. It's the wins, the wins are good and wins are fun and you walk off the field celebrating, but they don't ingrain themselves like the losses do. Because whenever you walk off the field from a win and, you know, you still like, like I used to like just mentally, like you see me after a football game, it doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter what happened just do not be close to me because I'm pissed off about, you know, wrong gap, you know, made the missed a call, like whatever it might be, just, just so like mad at myself. And like, that's the thing that I grind on. You don't remember any of the, the good plays, the plays that happen the way they're supposed to don't leave the mark. The things that didn't go the way they're supposed to is what leaves the mark. And after a loss, it's just like, it's a constant grind for, you know, 48 hours or longer about every single thing that went wrong. Like, what did you do the day leading up to the game? What did you do? The, how was your week of practice? How was your preparation? Did you watch all the film that you needed to? Did you, were you rested like you should have been? Did you cover all of the, like, did you see something with one of the other guys on the team that they weren't, that you didn't call out and you didn't fix? Like, what could you have done during the week differently that would have changed the outcome of the game? And it's every, and you just grind over it forever. And you, you don't, you don't ever stop. Still don't stop. You want to know one of the weirdest instances of that? Notre Dame in 2012, right? Massive game. Still, I think that was the best. That was the best environment I played in in Norman. I mean, that crowd was, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And yeah, going back and thinking about like, yeah, I got my ass kicked on a couple of plays. There, there's no doubt about it. But you know something, you know what happened on Friday? Driving to, you're heading to the stadium on Friday, pulling out of the neighborhood and there's a stop sign right there. 
and I, I stopped well behind the stop sign and, and I pull out, take a right to turn left on, uh, on Lindsay, get pulled over. Cop gives me a ticket for not stopping at the stop sign. And I was like, no, no, but I stopped, but like, you just couldn't see me. He's like, I mm, not buying it. And then had to, and then he was like, all right, good luck, man. I was just like, what? <laughs> and it wasn't that it wasn't bad that I was like, you should give me a ticket. You know, I start for you. It was like, no, I actually stopped. And I always wonder, like, it's so stupid. Like, would I have played better in that game if I didn't get that ticket? <laughs> like, I, th I think of it like, I, I, I was like, I wonder if that affected the way I played the next day. Like, it's, it's weird. Like, you think of everything that goes into preparing for a game. And, and like you're saying, Ted, like, when, you, when you're at OU and you lose a game, it's like, what did I not do to, to be ready to go? Like, very rarely are like, oh, they were, just, they were just way better than us. So that, uh, that's just another example. Like, I think, man, what, I, I stopped at the stop sign. I should, maybe I should have stopped, you know, closer to the stop sign to where the cop could have seen me, and, and maybe I would have played better, and, and maybe we would have won. Like, that's, that's, the, that's how you think about this stuff. And it, I know it sounds insane, but that is, that's just maybe the most extreme example right. of – yeah, they going back and thinking about when things went wrong, like why, you know, and I still pissed about that ticket, man. I still like, I do not ever view anything that I, that I, that I ever, I don't know. I, I am, it, it was probably a big detriment to honestly a big detriment to me that I was so critical of myself on everything. Like, I think it, I think it helped me in a bunch of ways, but I also think that it, it limited me in a bunch of ways because like, it was a win, lose, like grayed out at, you know, 99% or whatever. It was just an absolute, destruction of myself mentally over any type of mistake that I had. And I, I honestly, and I, and I still think about, I, I cannot view anything that's ever happened in any athlete. Like it does not even football of anything without being like super critical and embarrassed of myself of it. It's weird. That, <laughs> I, if we have any, any psychologists that listen, you know, any, anybody, any psychiatrists holler at us. We're, <laughs> we're damaged, man. Help, help us. 